Welcome back to another episode of Unscripted, the go-to podcast for those flipping the script and taking the unexpected path. I'm your host, Jessica Burgio, holistic life and business coach, author, speaker, and self-proclaimed high-energy hype girl. Each week, I'm bringing you inside. No gatekeeping here. I'll touch on proven holistic business strategies, powerful mindset shifts that have led my clients through massive transformations, and no BS conversation with industry leaders designed to help you get out of your own way to actively pursue a life of purpose. If you're ready to ditch the limitations of the door, hit follow and get ready to be activated to step boldly towards your big goals. Now let's dive in. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited to introduce you to today's guest. She is the sweetest, literally. Her name is Jaden Heck. She is the founder of Glow Movement. She is a wife, a mom, and she was a professional dancer for many years and a fitness trainer turned online fitness coach. So she and I got to sit down for a very juicy conversation on how her journey unfolded. She is going to be one of our guest trainers at the upcoming retreat that's coming to Scottsdale June 6th. There's still time to grab your tickets. I think she and I connected on Instagram because I just love how she shows up. Her energy is so calming. And she also offers any of the listeners, stay tuned if you can't listen to the whole episode, two weeks free of her app, the Globe Movement app. She launched Globe Movement because... Creating intentional movement in her life really changed her life. As a former dancer, and you'll hear, she struggled with an eating disorder and used to work out excessively. It really left her at the lowest point in her life, which she touched on a bit. And it wasn't until she discovered low impact movement is not only challenging, but it's a really great way to feel good and feel strong in your body. She wanted to create that for other people. So if you guys love this episode, you already know what to do. It means the world when you take just two minutes, which really it's 20 seconds to go leave a rating and review of the podcast. It really helps me get this out to more people and continue to grow the show. I love finding people who have led an unscripted path. So if that is you or someone, please introduce them to me and let me know how I can get them on the show. I love bringing you thoughtful conversation and just really digging in and asking the questions of how, why, and then what did you need to do in order to get out of your way to create the thing that you're doing? This podcast means the literal world to me, and I love that you're here and that you're listening. If you have not followed or rated or subscribed to the show, please do that. Again, these reviews mean the world to me, and resharing the episodes on social media is literally the biggest gift you can give to a creator. But be sure to click the link below and grab your free two weeks with Jaden and the Globe Movement app. Let's dig into today's podcast. Welcome back to Unscripted, the podcast. It's your girl Jess with another amazing guest who is going to be featured at our in-person retreat coming up here in Scottsdale very soon. I couldn't be more excited to have her on the show to share one, her story, but two, how she's helping so many people get in shape, feel better about themselves from the comfort of their own home. Jaden, welcome to the show. How are you? I am so good. Thanks so much for having me, Jess. Oh my gosh. I've really enjoyed and been inspired by watching you on social media. You are a mom, but you are so much more. Can you dig into a little bit of who you are in this season of life? This season of life, yes, absolutely. So mother, of course, I'm 14 months into this thing, so I'm definitely feeling still like a very new mom. But in this season of life, motherhood and just trying to navigate business in a different way and in a different way that actually I have found more growth, which might be shocking if there are moms listening. I think sometimes we get scared to start something because we're like, I have to take care of this kid and I have all these things to do. But honestly, what I have found is that my business has grown greater since becoming a mom. So that's kind of the season I'm in is tapping into that energy and really just being and owning myself too. I love that. Oh my gosh, 14 months. Flashback. Kai is going to be 13 here in a couple of months. I almost have a teenager, which is wild because it feels like I just had him just yesterday. It goes by so fast and I know in the early month, it doesn't feel like it goes by super fast. Some days feel like they're 14 days in one day. And I think entrepreneurship is much like having a child. Like just when you think you got it all dialed in, they're taking their naps when they're supposed to. Everything's good. Something shifts. They go through a growth spurt or they're teething or they won't nap anymore or they don't want to eat that thing they used to eat. And I feel like business is really similar. So I'm curious if that's been maybe the result too of that little bit of stretch where you have a kid now, so you've had to navigate that and problems that used to seem like a level 10 before you had a kid, maybe now you're like, "Mm, it's a level two. I got this. I can handle anything. I am a mom. Yes. I have found where to put my energy. Like you said, I used to care about the littlest, tiniest things that were like the biggest issue on my list. And now I'm like, oh, that means nothing. I would say motherhood brings where to put your energy. I couldn't agree with that more. 
Oh my gosh. I had a pretty successful career. And when I had Kai, I was booked and busy and I was in the salon. I was in the gym training clients. I was doing all the things. I could be everywhere all the time. And there was more than enough time, it seemed, to do things. And then insert another human that you have to take care of. It was like, oh, I can't just go to the gym whenever I want. I can't just do whatever I want whenever I want. And that changed a lot of stuff for me. And someone who had never really worked out from home before started to do more at home stuff because you got to do what you can do in the time that you do have. I would have rather left the laundry and left the dishes and took care of myself because mentally I always knew like that was going to make me feel better. Therefore, everybody else gets a better version of mom. So if that's going on, we're going to be okay. So can we speak to the fact that you have started a full online business? Give us a little backstory because I know this wasn't where you started. No, it was not at all. So I actually started this business. So back in 2020 is when I launched it and it was originally called Ready Fit, which was my maiden name. And it was a random blog that I had that I like did not share with anyone. I don't even think you can go back and look at that blog. I think I just deleted it. I was like, I don't even want to go back and look at what that is. But I was actually dancing professionally up until COVID hit, essentially. At that point, it was just a major pivot of what's next? What am I going to do? And I had found low impact movement throughout my dance career because I suffered with just really low confidence and self-worth. And I found that low impact movement was like the best thing for my mental health. So naturally when 2020 happened and I'm just like a natural entrepreneur at heart, even when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to start this Froyo business or just whatever random. I always had these thoughts. So I think when it forced me to actually think about something that I want to do that could really bring me joy, just like dance had, but I couldn't do that at the time. I was like, I'm going to launch Ready Fit. Never launched a brand, had a personal Instagram, but never had any experience in that realm. And I just started teaching workouts to friends from home and then it just kind of evolved. And two years into it, it grew, but it started to plateau. And then that's when I think the self-worth things that I had struggled with in the past really started to take hold on me again because I quit. I full on was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I remember actually like a specific moment when I was teaching an Instagram live. I would go live every week to teach a workout. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to grow my Instagram, blah, blah, blah. And I had one person on that live. And I just remember getting off that live and just sitting on my couch and crying and just being like, what am I doing? I'm putting so much energy into this and not getting a return. And looking back, the thing is, it was so forced. Like I was trying to push the narrative of a brand that I didn't fully connect with. The name Ready Fit, it just came to be. So I really had to pivot. And I think becoming a mom helped me really figure out, okay, what are my core values? Because your brand is an extension of you. Before that, it was just such a newbie, you know, 21 years old, 22 years old, just like trying to figure out what to do. And it's really evolved into something beautiful and it's grown more than I could have ever dreamed of. And I know that this is also just the beginning. Oh my gosh, I love that bit of backstory. And I feel like a lot of times people look at someone like you where you're at now and think, oh, she just has it all together. Pretty blonde fit. That was easy. Of course, that makes sense. But there's always like a backstory behind things. There's always more when we dig a little bit deeper, which is why I love doing this podcast, because that's how I started during COVID with this podcast. It was originally called the Beauty Inspires Beauty Podcast for any of my OG listeners. Shout out to you. And it started to feel like a disconnect. I felt disconnected to the brand because I just chose a name arbitrarily. I knew in the beginning that wasn't going to be the end all, but I just started much like you. And I think if we didn't start down the path, we wouldn't have ever realized, OK, that's not feeling right. That's not aligned anymore. And I think the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship is that you can pivot and you can change things and you can evolve and grow as you personally grow and evolve. And that's what people actually want from you is they want to see the process. Being able to document stuff and show it and share it humanizes a brand. And I think you do a really good job and a beautiful job of sharing that on social media, the behind the scenes and just like the growth of how you have built the app and what's really acceptable to people now. So it's a good thing you didn't fully quit. Let's talk through that realignment period because I think that's the part, too, where people are like, OK, so I'm not aligned with exactly what I'm doing. My message might not feel clear. Maybe I don't really know what my values are for this brand. I just started something because it felt good. It felt right. But it's not, quote unquote, working, meaning it's not making money. It's not growing. You're not getting a following, whether that's a service based business or even a product based business. I think it kind of is applicable to both. What was the things that you really sat with and figured out how to realign it and make it more you? So I had to leave it in order to really figure out what was next for me. So 
It was interesting timing that same week after I got off that Instagram live and had a very low moment. A friend of mine reached out to me and she was like, hey, I have a job opportunity for you at this company I'm at. I've never been in the corporate space ever in my entire life. And it was like this executive assistant position at this tech company and they like weren't requiring experience. So I'm like, do they want my resume? Because literally it's all like choreographers and dance companies. There's no experience. She networked me to them and I got an interview. Next thing you know, I get a job offer and there's like salary and there's benefits. And I thought in that moment, I was like, this is what everyone's talking about. I've made it. I was like, this is the moment for me to finally make money. And honestly, at that point, it felt like keeping up with my friends on a dancer salary, on entrepreneurial salary, like it's a grind. And I was working multiple jobs and struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, essentially. So it was like this moment for me to really see, oh, there's something else out there. Obviously, it was not the place for me to be, but I'm so glad I did it because I was able to sit in a room with high performing executives and just be a fly on the wall and just learn from them. I also got to see and feel for myself what actually brings me joy because I just felt like every single day I was checking a box. The dancer in me, as the person who helps women fall back in love with themselves, there wasn't much passion behind it. Sometimes I just felt like worthless in a sense of just like, how many Ubers can I order these people or meals or ridiculous requests? At the end of the day, it was just a job. I took so much from it. And at that place, I did end up having a baby and I went on a maternity leave, returned back to work. My role was changed and I didn't think much of it. I was like, I'm just going to keep moving forward. This is fine. We're just going to continue on. And they laid me off six weeks later. In that moment, of course, it sucked. We just had a baby. We put an offer in on a house and did all these things that we could do finally with a higher income coming in. And it was a wake-up call, but it was also a moment for me to turn back inward because I truly believe I was running from what I was meant to be doing just out of fear. There wasn't self-worth. I did not actually believe that I could do what I wanted to do. I think getting laid off was such an important piece to the puzzle of this journey to say, okay, what do you actually want to do? And I took time, I took months to figure out next steps and started listening to my intuition again. So I'm a generator in human design. I'm like a natural role model. I listen and I follow with my gut. And I had been avoiding those things just to seek the external stuff, seek the materialistic stuff. I've just really found this way to let go and surrender and detach. And what I've found is that I've just discovered more joy than I ever have in my business. And that is what has led to deeper connections with other women, with other moms, with other people who are interested in low impact movement or maybe just haven't found a routine that they love to do or maybe someone who's recovering from an eating disorder or postpartum. I'm grateful that happened. I can confidently say that now getting laid off was the best thing that ever happened to me and my family. So good. I feel like there's always some sort of a pain point shift that happens for people in order to like jump because your mind wants to stay in the familiar territory of what is safe and that income, especially at that time of your guys' life, you probably would have never thrown the towel in and quote unquote, put you guys in that situation of financial, I don't know what's happening. I don't know where we're going, but they probably couldn't fire you while you were on leave because of corporate HR jargon, which is great. And then they had to do it in a way that was acceptable in corporate world. I'm learning so much about the corporate world because my partner is in corporate and it is wild. And I can see the temptation of that safe paycheck and that safe security of staying in something because he's in a very high paying position and he's been with the company 24 years. And There is a lot of that validation and those attaboys and the checklists that get done. And he's a generator too. So as a man, that validation of like, good job. He just lives for that shit. And he has such an entrepreneurial spirit and such a leader. I'm over here trying to encourage him to branch out. And he's I couldn't even imagine what that would look like. I don't even think it's about the money anymore. It's just about the loyalty and not knowing and obviously being scared. But I guarantee if he got laid off, he would figure something else out. So that is such an interesting perspective because there are those theories that people talk about of like burning the boats. A lot of people I've been in rooms with, whether it's a mastermind or a coaching program, have a vision and a dream on their heart, but they're too scared because they have no real depth of self-worth that they could actually accomplish it or figure it out. But when push comes to shove and you don't have any other option but to figure something out, you can figure it out. 
I would say you've done more than figure it out. So let's talk through what it is you created with Glow because it is quite amazing. And I know you spoke to so many things that you do help women with. Are those things that you cover on the app as far as what is available? Or is that something on the side that you also offer in addition to the classes that people can take? My vision with Glow was to bring, of course, movement into your home in a way that you can do it anytime, anywhere. But I also love that in-person feeling. So I've been heavy on live classes since I started. In the beginning, I had so much more because it was like the dancer in me who did double show days was like, I need to do two classes a day. And now I have three lives a week, which is still quite a lot. But I've discovered that less is more and people get super excited to pop into those lives to see the community. And the big thing that has evolved from 2020 till now really is the culture. All the women, I'm so grateful I found them all. I really look at all my clients as friends. It's like this equal relationship where they're just as much there for me as I am for them and then each other. And I'm starting to see little pockets here in Phoenix. I recently moved back here. I think it's been a year and a half now. But my big goal here is to really just start to connect more women in the Arizona space. And I'm starting to see that come to fruition. I have actually an event this Saturday. And I have more people signed up than I could imagine at this point with just really diving into it this year. So much has shifted and the app was new as well this year. So I was too scared to launch an app two years ago. I was like, who's really gonna use it? Those were the thoughts running through my mind that were holding me back, thinking that no one would see the value. Of course, like you said, there's always highs and lows and you figure something out and then something happens. I'm working out like a trademark thing right now. I got an email last night at 10 p.m. There was like a trademark issue with the app and I'm like, oh my God, what does this mean? There's always going to be things and hurdles to jump over, but it's really evolved into this all in one place where you can connect with women, you can book your life class, you can pop into any workout you want, or you can book an in-person class too. So fun. Oh my gosh. You guys, we have so many connections in Scottsdale and Phoenix and that's why Jaden's going to be coming to the in-person event to lead a workout in the morning for the girls. This is part of my unscripted mastermind. They get this one-on-one -on -one exclusive time with her. And then also for any of you listening, she is gifting the listeners two weeks free to her app. So scroll down below in the show notes and click the link on that and be sure to check it out. It's so cool though, because I find there are a lot of people who talk about making an impact with women or being a supporter of women, but you truly have that ingrained in you. Where does that come from? And where is that passion behind guiding women through not just movement, but through other things, because we know movement can unlock a lot of other things for many of us, myself included. I really think that this stems from my past relationship with myself. As a dancer, seeing all the women I was surrounded with nitpicking themselves, like starving themselves, taking weight loss supplements and laxatives. And I saw it all and it was so normalized. And I think that once I got into my actual like professional dance career, luckily I was in more of a contemporary ballet company. I found that their bodies were more celebrated than I think what we thought in college. I think seeing that shift from women beating themselves up, and I was doing this too, training from nine to five, and then going and killing themselves at the gym over and over to then go into the professional space of hearing people going back to their families at the end of the day. And I felt like I had this permission to finally like live my life, a life free from needing to be a 100% perfect. And I know not everyone's experience in the professional dance world is that way, but I just knew when I found low impact movement, I actually started at a pure bar back when. That was like the first time in my life where I did a workout that I actually felt fueled me and lifted me up and made me feel strong versus over and over running, doing sprints, doing things that really were just breaking me down mentally and physically. But I think from that point, I was like more of those dancers that I worked with at U of A. I'm like, they need this in their lives. They need to know that they don't have to do X, Y, and Z to feel their best and that you don't need necessarily an hour a day. If that fuels you, amazing. I am all about doing what works best for you. And truly, like when people come to me and they discover, oh, maybe something else is better. I'm honestly like good because I also want to be a part of the process for women to figure out what is actually going to bring them joy because movement for me was not joyful for so long. And now it finally is like it's become a lifestyle. And I know that kind of sounds cheesy, but it really has like it is just a no brainer. I know every day I'm going to get movement in and I don't put this emphasis on it has to be for an hour. I'm like, if I only got 10 minutes during this nap time and I want to crush these emails and then do a quick 10 minute arm, that's what I'm going to do. And that's enough. I love that. 
That is probably speaking to the majority of the people listening. I come from a competitive bodybuilding background. It's such a different world and gymnastics, but I experienced it a little bit growing up in the gymnastics phase of quickly realizing I was far too large to be one of quote unquote them and that I was never going to be accepted in that world. And I think at that age, I slowly was able to wean myself away from it. I remember my mom telling me not to wear shorts to school and not realizing at the time that it was because she was saving me from embarrassment versus telling me that I wasn't allowed to wear shorts. So I remember thinking I'm bigger than most of these girls or I'm thicker than most. I have more muscle than most people. And there wasn't a lot of conversation about it back when I was a kid. We didn't talk about it. And then the diet pills phase came out and the how skinny could you get phase. And that was a really tough time to be a kid for me because my body type didn't come into style until the Kardashians made having a butt and being thicker popular. So it's crazy to think about how much women do put themselves through the ringer on all sorts of things. And I actually found myself making comments the other day to my partner and he stopped me and said, could you maybe try to not be so hard on yourself? I love that he did that. Me too. But then I realized the effects of what we say to ourselves, even out loud, how they affect other people. I could have just been making an offhanded comment. And to him, it was something he needed to fix. My problems became his problems. I think the awareness and being in a supportive group is key. And I know that you're building community with women and just having a safe place to be able to experiment with new movement. If you've never done something low impact, this is a beautiful way to take two weeks and in the comfort of your own home where no one's looking and you can wear the shortest shorts you want. Whatever you want to wear. That's one of my favorite things about working out at home. I could literally look as crazy as I want and it's the best thing ever versus when I go to the gym, I still put my eyebrows on. I just love that you created such an awesome thing for people to have access to. And if you hadn't chased your dreams and hadn't put yourself out there in a way that felt really stretchy and uncomfortable, so many people wouldn't be benefiting from it. And you guys, if you're in the Scottsdale area or if you're local, you can always do a one-on-one -on -one session in person. And you probably have some of these events listed on the website that people can find if they're in town. Yeah, I have events listed on the website and I do work one on one. I have a very private group of clients. I don't really advertise it because I'm still kind of navigating childcare and all of that. It's a vibe and we feel like we can really push the needle forward. Going back to your comment, just about like what you say internally and what you say outside, how it is so powerful. And that is something that is a big why behind Glow and how I teach with such affirmative language. And I think as I'm reflecting on this, I'm like, I really believe that, that has also transformed my relationship with exercise because there is no focus or words talking about anything of that like diet culture past that we've both experienced because that stuff, you don't even know it's ingrained in you until it comes out in those moments where you look in the mirror before going to an event and you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. And then you're like, oh my gosh, why is that even like naturally a response that I'm thinking? That shouldn't be the first thing that comes to your mind. So for me in movement and guiding women, it's all about you are capable, you are strong, like we're here to challenge ourselves mentally, getting to your mat. That is something to be proud of and like showing compassion and kindness. And I just have gotten the best feedback from my clients. And of course, me doing it, even postpartum, it's tough, especially when you like have this bounce back culture. It's still a thing. I will say it's still a thing. I had grandparents that were like, oh, you bounce back fast. And I'm like, why are we even saying that? You know what I mean? It's like, I just had a baby. So many other women are having babies. We shouldn't be commenting about their bodies. You don't know what they're going through. I owe so much of my healing to movement because it allowed me to just accept and be kind to what I had just been through. And I think a lot of women get scared about that postpartum phase of like, how is this going to feel? And how am I going to look? And you just have to take those steps back and move past that postpartum diet culture, essentially, and just fuel yourself with nutritious food and movement that truly puts you in a better mood. Totally. And I guess if anyone's listening who has maybe not been working out, you know, in the more recent months and wants to try something new, are there different class levels for them to try on the app? Yes. I'm a big stickler on beginner and not in the sense of like, I'm a newbie, but more of just like getting back into it. At the end of the day, we all move. We all walk. We all do this. We all move our bodies. So it's like a very nice, gentle way for people who haven't worked out in a while to just build that up. I have intermediate classes and I also have advanced classes as well. But truly, like the most beautiful thing about bar and about Pilates is that it really does work for every body. There are so many different modifications and I include modifications as well. I have like videos for every single thing just so people feel really confident 
in their own bodies. I had a client the other day that was like, my hips are feeling tight. We'll just send her a quick little video over Instagram or over text and say like, these three things you can do. And I always keep in mind too, like, what does my community need? I record additional content monthly or bi-weekly. Ultimately, this is about the women in the community. Generally though, they're like, give me quick abs, give me quick arms. It's actually so incredible to see these women like pop in for a quick 10 minutes. I can see when you work out and I track it and it's fun to like see the people that gravitate towards X, Y, and Z or choose the quicker workout versus the 45 or 30 minute because some minutes are better than no minutes at the end of the day. Totally. And I think every little bit counts. And I think that's the point you were trying to drive home earlier of I had the mentality if it wasn't a full blown two hour training session, it didn't count. I've had to retrain myself that an hour of yoga is just as important as going to train for two hours like I used to. If anything, it's more important now because I'm able to ground and be super mindful. But you're right. The pressures we put on ourselves to do things maybe like we used to do them. I'm in my 40s now. So like talk about your body changing and then obviously post children. It's different. We're not saying that it's easy, but there are things like that are stress relievers in the form of movement that can definitely help. And like having a supportive community for me has changed everything as well. If you guys are needing that, I highly suggest just scroll down on the show notes, click on the link, grab your free two weeks. I'm so excited to see you in person in Scottsdale and experience you live. It'll be so much fun. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Thank you so much for saying yes to that opportunity and for coming to share all of your magic with the girls. You guys, if you love this episode, if this has moved you to start to move a little bit more, let us know. I'm really excited to always be connected to some of the coolest people. Thanks, Instagram. Thanks, entrepreneurship community, for just allowing there to be a space for women like you, obviously, to show up and just put all of that stuff out there and being real raw and vulnerable, because that's what we want to connect with is real people. And I think you sharing all of that, again, humanizes it and just taking us along for the journey. I just love the story so much. So thanks for showing up on the podcast and really choosing an unscripted path. Where can people find you on Instagram? You can find me at Glow Movement, G-L-O Movement. And that's the only page that I'm on right now. Perfect. Awesome, you guys. And again, go grab your two weeks free down below in the show notes and we'll see you on the next episode of Unscripted.